It's also tough because it's just, well, it's just hard to draw this letter anyway, uh, no matter what's happened to you. But this is a, a letter that's really close to my heart, and boy, do I ever feel the pain just sitting here talking to you while I'm constructing it. And, um, well, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the letter B. It's a hard letter, and it stands for betrayal. And if you've ever been betrayal, here's my B. Not a great B, but it's my B. Somebody might say, well, you've kind of betrayed the calligraphy rules there. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi there, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. If you ever watch New Life Live, you know that I've usually got a pen in my hand and I'm doodling somehow. And so with this series on Going Deeper, I've decided to take a letter and just talk about that letter and something that starts with that letter. So today, for a couple of different reasons, um, I'm, I'm going to write a letter here, or I'm going to at least uh, draw a letter. And, you know, this is a tough one. This is a tough letter because of what happened to me. It's also tough because it's just, well, it's just hard to draw this letter anyway, uh, no matter what's happened to you. But this is a, a letter that's really close to my heart, and boy, do I ever feel the pain just sitting here talking to you while I'm constructing it. And, um, well, here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the letter B. It's a hard letter, and it stands for betrayal. And if you've ever been betrayal, here's my B. Not a great B, but it's my B. Somebody might say, well, you've kind of betrayed the calligraphy rules there. But betrayal is what I want to talk to you about. It happened to me, and when it did, and if it's ever happened to you, you know what I'm talking about. Every part of my life fell apart. Everything felt worse than I ever imagined anything could feel because I was betrayed by somebody I loved, somebody I thought that I could trust. Boy. I'll tell you, I had a lot of wise people around me. A lot of folks thought that I was in a great relationship, all that. B for betrayal. So I want to help you if you've been betrayed. First thing to do, I think most of us know this, is survive. Do whatever you have to do to survive. One thing is you don't want to take your life, that's for sure. Another thing is you don't want to, out of anger, go provoke somebody else and they take your life. So survival is really important. A lot of people do some unhealthy things after betrayal. Uh, and You sure don't want to go have a um, revenge betrayal and you betray them. That's not going to help. And sometimes when somebody does something unhealthy, uh, people that don't understand how much pain it has caused, they'll, they'll judge that person. But I got to tell you, you do what you have to do to survive and try to minimize any damage that's already been done to you. You don't want to put more on there. So revenge. That means if I'm not going to have revenge or take revenge, I need to deal with the pain. So first of all, we got to feel this stuff. If you instantly start taking drugs and, and drinking heavy and all that, you're not going to feel the stuff that must be felt to get through it, over it, and beyond it. And that's what I want to help you do. So numbing out or just totally living outside of reality is not going to help you. You've got to feel this stuff. That's what the betrayer did to you. They betrayed you, and it put pain right in the center of everything that you are. And now you're going to have to struggle in certain areas because of what they did. And guess what God wants you to do? Forgive the people that hurt you. So 
The temptation, of course, in Christian circles is to have a real peace about everything and just say you forgive and now we can all be happy. That is just so stupid to do. Jesus did not have a real peace about everything. When, uh, when Lazarus died, he cried. Uh, when he was in the garden, he sweat drops of blood. He was in so, so much grief and agony. So feeling it is something you need to do rather than faking like, oh, this is really great. I'm so strong. I can handle this. It's not a problem for me. It's a problem and you need to deal with it authentically. So you want to survive and you want to feel during that survival. I suggest that the most difficult way to survive and still feel the pain to get through it is to do it alone, right? One of the cool things that's developed, been developed over the years is a thing called grief group. Uh, you can join a grief group. Uh, there's a Life Recovery Bible with a workbook to go through the steps, steps to help you grieve what was stolen, ripped out of your heart when somebody betrayed you. I hate that, but it happens. And it happened to me. And I literally didn't know I was gonna survive. Now, here's what was amazing to me. As I got into some counseling afterwards, I discovered what the source of the pain that felt like an ice pick going right through my heart. The source of the pain, I didn't even know this could be painful. I knew what fear felt like out here, but after betrayal, you feel fear here, and that was my pain. The pain came from my fear of everything that was going to be because of what was done before. So I just added it all up. Of course, it didn't come true, the stuff that I added up, but that's what I did. So you want to be careful, but it's really helpful to identify what is the source of my pain. Is it fear? Uh, is it disgust? Is that the pain? Is it, uh, I don't know, helplessness, victimization? Find out what that pain is. Mine, definitely mine, was fear. No question, it was fear. And it was pain. I didn't know pain could be so fearful. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to be sure if anybody else is in your life that's unhealthy, you, you get them out of your life for a while. Well, maybe forever. Because uh, you don't want to, in, in your weakness and vulnerability, fall into some other kind of hurtful situation. But what you, you want to do for yourself is you want to get through it, get over it, and beyond it. And the beyond is not where you're addicted to sameness, predictability, and protection and safety. Because that's what I see. A lot of people get hurt. They never want to go beyond anything else. They just want to protect themselves. And they have a miserable life. And it was, it's miserable because the person betrayed them and their reaction was a very, very hurtful to themselves reaction. So here's the best thing you can possibly do when betrayed. Give yourself a break. You didn't cause this. You might have caused some problems and friction in the relationship, but you did not cause that person to make the decision to betray you. Feel it. Have somebody with you to get through it, to survive it, and feel it. And then you start to see the reality of your situation. You see what has been lost, and you grieve that so that you can then accept the reality that's left. This happened to me. It's horrible. There's some things I'm not going to be able to do I wanted to do. People are going to look at me differently. All those kinds of things. But I want to tell you something. You must resist every temptation possible to be embarrassed because this happens to so many people. But you, you look at everything and you, you grieve it and you come to uh, accept the reality that's here after you've grieved it. And then once you've accepted it, you kind of embrace this is who I am. Like it or not, this is who I am. And now I've got to do something really good for me now I'm going to start to forgive. I've done the grief work, so I've separated from what I've lost. Now I can truly forgive. And forgiving that person with that person, it really helps to see 
that they really had some sickness in them that wasn't their fault. You know, there was a parent, there was somebody else that hurt them, and then, then they in turn hurt you. In other words, you try to see them as a fellow human being. Uh, you're not perfect, they're not perfect, but you try to accept them as a broken person who hurt you. And, and then eventually you let some of that seep in, not immediately, that yeah, a broken person broke me, but I'm not gonna stay broken. And then you can begin that forgiveness process. You can ask God to help you forget. You can say, I don't forgive, but I, I ask God to give me the power and the Holy Spirit to give me power to forget. And so eventually you end up, you've forgiven that person. And, and then once you've forgiven, you appropriately protect yourself from being hurt again, but you don't just stay stuck in that, and you take a risk or two, and you find a couple of really healthy, healthy people to connect with. And after about a year, you start to believe, I'm gonna be okay. For some, maybe it's six months. But here's something that people told me, and I'll leave you with this because I believe it to be true. They told me when I was betrayed, it will take five years for you to be totally free from this experience. Well, I just got busy doing this stuff. I had a lot of healthy people around me. And sure enough, when five years rolled around, something lifted. Now, I don't know if it was self-fulfilling prophecy or what, but it got better. And um, so I'm going to say to you, five years, you're going to be better. But I'm also going to say this, when you get into the process that I've described versus not knowing what to do, and you start to feel like you're going to get better sooner than later. I'm so sorry if someone betrayed you. And I hope and pray if we could ever help you with that, you'd call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Listen to the radio program, 1 o'clock, Sirius XM, Eastern Time, Channel 131. Go to our website, newlife.com. Go to the app. Uh, we're on YouTube. Let us comfort you every day with five days a week of radio. Maybe that'd help too. I'd love to hear from you. My email address, sarderburn at newlife.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.